Hi, I'm Brad Power, and this is uh, uh, latest in a series of Prostate Cancer Lab meetings, our weekly meetings. And today we're going to be talking about paying for cancer care. Uh, this is one of a number of personal items that uh, are off the topic that we usually talk about, because we're usually talking about testing and matching with, you know, treatments with uh, biomarkers and th things of that sort, functional testing. But these are a number of, of uh, the kind of issues that cancer patients deal with. Uh, we've had a couple of sessions on nutrition, and we'll have a couple more. But financial toxicity, uh, financial issues, managing this is uh, something we know is an issue. It's kind of came out of the conversation I had with Kevin, who told me about some, again, since we're, I like the notion of hacking, that Kevin had a hack, like a way he got around some of the pricing uh, challenges, uh, shopping around using good RX. And so that's the background for this. And I'd been in contact with Nancy for a long time. I'd heard about her work at Nancy's List. And I thought she would be a perfect person to bring, given her wide experience in this and other issues related to um, challenges people face when they get a cancer diagnosis. So I do a round of introductions, Nancy, uh, Mike, and Kevin, and then each introduce yourselves, and then if then we'll just have you make sort of an opening statement or whatever you want to say, share a slide, whatever it might be, and we'll let the conversation flow from there. Nancy. Okay. Um, what I bring to the table here is I was diagnosed in 2004 with stage four ovarian cancer. I knew nothing about cancer. In fact, when they said it's stage four of ovarian cancer, you say, well, thank God it's not appendicitis, which I thought it was. And yippee, let's go. And then I said, by the way, what's stage five? So that's what I started with. Um, during my many, many long aggressive infusions at Stanford where I was treated, uh, whenever I had the opportunity, I invited my fellow sisters and brothers to tell me their stories. And I'm a clinical psychologist. I can't stop talking, you know, and asking questions and wanting to understand what people are going through. And I was very, very struck about by the helplessness and hopelessness and isolation and distrust and just anguish that these people were feeling. And what was striking and what changed my whole life was finding out that they weren't so much fearful about living and dying or dying as they were about the money, that they didn't have the money to get treated they thought if they told their doctors they weren't taking their medications because they couldn't afford it, they wouldn't get treatment. So this was pretty hard to hear. Some of them were scared at pieces that if they told their employer, they'd lose their jobs. If they had insurance, it wasn't good enough. Uh, they just didn't know how to pay for basic living expenses. I mean, people would say they had to choose between food on the table for their families or taking their meds and they chose the families. Of course, they didn't tell the doctors they weren't taking the meds. And this one man told me that he was considering suicide because he was a financial burden to his family. And I went nuts, I do that, you know, and things of this sort. This was not so unacceptable to me. And especially in this country that people were more concerned about living that they couldn't afford to live than anything else. Uh, and I vowed that I was gonna find the money because I knew it was out there. I knew there were organizations or people or whatever that could support people who were being treated at Stanford and everywhere else around the planet uh, and didn't have to go through this stress. And from a professional sense, I know that stress doesn't help any of us with our cancer issues. and. I needed to find a way to mitigate the stress of financial concerns. So I started this project. I had started a nonprofit in 2006, which was called Nancy's List. And it was just going to be a list, that was my main plan, of financial resources that I could research and find and give to the people who needed them the most. Um, Luckily, I met amazing people along the way and learned, as many of you know, that there are angels in our midst as we go through cancer. There are a lot of incredible people and organizations who want to be helpful, and that's what they're there for. 
So it's, it's important that we learn how to navigate the system, the financial system of cancer treatments so that we can be on top of what we have to do. I have my own personal experiences with you know, financial disasters from getting bills from Stanford for tens of thousands of dollars at a time, even though I did have a fancy PPO, that, but they don't cover everything. So I, this is my gift. This is my love letter to the universe and, and thank and gratitude for my recovery. And no more, uh, no, no more recurrences. So that's what I, why I'm here. I lost awesome. you. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Uh, that's a great intro and a great setup. Uh, Mike, why don't you go next? Okay, sure. Uh, basically, I've got a, a little, little slide deck here that, that basically provides a little bit of insight as to some of the challenges I have seen as I look going into 2023, knowing full well that I'm a Medi Medicare eligible patient, so therefore I've got Medicare Part D. And there's a lot of issues with that, with the thousands of plans they have out there on the Medicare.gov website that you can try to you know, provide them the, uh, the information as to what drugs you're on. The biggest challenge I see and have found is that you never know what might be new tomorrow, uh, depending on your, your cancer, your treatments, et cetera. So I don't know, Brad, if, if you can allow me to share or not here. And if so, I'll, I'll try to walk through this real quick. And if it gets too laborious, I'll stop. Give it a try. Okay, let me see. Can you see that? Can you see anything? No. No. Hmm. Okay, hold it there. Let me, let me, let me try one thing here. Boom, share. There you go. That's working. You're working. Okay, wonderful. Let me, uh, let me get this into presentation mode and maybe we can get started here. Uh, come on, come on. Let me have it. I got, I got stuff in the way is my problem here. Just a second here. Well, I can't move my, I can't move. Anyway, hopefully you can see the whole thing because I can't. Let me uh, move you all a little bit here. There we go. So basically, the, like I've already mentioned, uh, the biggest issue is, you know, not knowing what you might need makes least cost planning oftentimes a challenge. And, and as I've already also mentioned, you can go out to the, the Medicare.gov website and uh, there's there are thousands of plans and it basically asks you for what drugs you're, you're, you're taking or what you think you might take. And then it gives you a whole plethora of uh, different options at different costs. So I've just, uh, what I've done is, you know. Mike, could you uh, hit, there's a there's a slideshow on the, on the bottom, towards the bottom right. There's a thing okay. called, there you go, click on that. Thank you. Okay. So, so basically, uh, I, I, I did an example where I basically took the drugs I'm currently taking, but then also as I have continued to look at one of the cure match options of which uh, there are two drugs and three drugs combo that, that you know, cure, cure match made available to me. So I have used those. And on this particular page there at the bottom there, Everolimus ever and Eclusig, I guess is how you say those. But what you see here is, is effectively the, the per month costs for what I'll call my standard drugs I'm currently taking, plus the cure match option, should I need to start taking those? And of course, from the standpoint of this this example, it assumes that I take them, you know, month one, which would be January 2023. But you can see here that we're looking at, you know, almost twenty thousand dollars plus the annual premium of, of uh, three thirty nine sixty. So you know, it gets pretty pricey pretty quick. Then uh, I also just took a look at what my current drug list alone is without the cure match options. As you can see, it drops significantly because the two cure match options are pretty pretty pricey. But I'm still looking at you know, over you know $4,300 per month, and uh, and so then I took a look. Okay, what if we just looked at the cure match only options? And as you can see here, those come to about you know twenty two thousand three eighty six. And so you're probably going, you know, why why the difference? And and bottom line is that you you get into some some issues where you it's called the donut hole in the, in the Part D space, but you know, when you're taking multiple drugs, then they kind of get offset a little bit. So you do see a slight differential between the cure match only drugs and, and the, my, my current drug list without cure match. And, and so there's, there's a slightly different difference about $2,265, which I say is where they're basically spreading those costs across those, those different drugs. Uh, 
you know, as drug needs change, the plan you're on may no longer provide the least expensive cost options. And of course, like I said, with my example, uh, I could find a different plan that offered a lesser cost for a subset of drugs, i.e. The, the, the standard drugs I'm currently taking, but I also wanted to plan for the future and what the future might be, which is including the, the cure match drugs. So basically I chose, uh, you know, the lowest cost plan based upon everything, even though I may be paying a little bit more for my standard drug list in the interim. Another example, just what I ran into this past year is uh, doctor wanted to put me on abiraterone. This was back uh, early this year. And our, my original uh, was $2,300 a month. I actually had reached out to the manufacturer financial assistance site and uh, they weren't much help. And then I was able to, through my current Part D plan, get a revision to about 1100 bucks a month for abiraterone. And of course I'm a tightwad to some degree. It's basically, nope, that's not gonna work. And then I got humanity about 500 plus a month. And from my perspective at that moment, and it was kind of like, nope, that's still too much. So basically what I did is I got a little creative, went out, did some Googling, found a, a company called QuickRx out of New York. And because there's a lot of, you know, fly by night online pharmacies out there, I want to be very careful. So I checked the FDA site and confirmed that, that QuickRx was indeed a valid FDA approved pharmacy. And of course, of course, Quick RX quoted me $240 a month for one year. They would guarantee it one year. And basically what they claimed that they did is that they had benefactors that wanted people to have their drugs. So they were able to offer cheaper drugs and uh, they could do it, you know, basically one year at a time. So I basically accepted their offer. And what's interesting, I don't, I don't know, I haven't even asked the question yet, but for the last two months, it's dropped from 240 to 180 a month. So once again, very, very competitive for Abiraterone. And uh, as, as I've said, uh, for 2023, I'm looking at the Walgr what they call the Walgreens Part D plan. And uh, uh, for Part D, of course, it does make my abiraterone a little bit cheaper as I go forward. And another drug that, I'm gonna start, that I've just started taking uh, this year, uh, but will also go into 2023, is, is Orgovix. And uh, because my Part D plan doesn't do a good job that I'm currently on for 2022, um, out of pocket for November and December is over nine hundred dollars per month forever for for Orgovix, if you will. And of course, the issue with that is that you know it's basically Lupron versus Orgovix. Lupron being office administered, i.e., you got to go in the office get a shot. And with you know my Part G, my Part B, et cetera, my out of pocket is zero dollars. So it's kind of like man, that's the cheapest option you got. Orgovix being an oral drug, it goes under your Part D plan. So like I said, uh, you know. And this is basically 2023 I'm looking at now, but cost after covering deductible in month one is 649 bucks. And after I hit what they call the donut hole, it'll be $601. And that'll last until I get up to some $5,000 spend or something like that. And of course, after the donut hole, the monthly cost drops to about $120. So those are some of the challenges I've got with respect to, uh, with respect to uh, uh, my drug issues. So, I guess with that, I'll, I'll open it up to any any questions, et cetera, that you all might have. Nancy, do you have any comments on what uh, what Mike has just presented from your experience? I would go straight to the drug companies. You know, okay. They have uh, medication assistance programs, every single one of them, and just, you know, spell it out. I mean, you might abbreviate some of this, but I'd go straight to them and see if you, know, you can't do this. This is exhausting. This is stressful. This is not good for us. Yeah, um, just one one comment. I mean, you know, I'm 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 retired. Been retired for a number of years, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm still getting some uh, deferred compensation from the company I work for. And what I found so far in going to drug companies is I I'm let's just say I'm over the limit. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not poor. Be super poor, uh, but I'm I'm rich enough not to have them help me any. Right, but but I mean. I'd go to pharma, you know, if you can do that and break it down. Also, I'm a big fan of needy meds. Do you know needy meds? No, I don't. Okay. It's on my website. There's a big okay. stuff about needy meds and they can sort of do all this. My other big, I'm a big fan of Patient Advocate Foundation. Um, and just say, this is, you know, this is un unacceptable. I mean, you don't need to deal with all this stuff. You know, give it to somebody else to deal with. But, um, uh, you know, those are my my first thoughts. Like, I'll keep thinking, but but those are places okay. to really check out. Okay? No, so I appreciate it. Okay, I just want to... 
Passion Advocate, Patient Advocate Foundation, and Pharma for each one of these companies and because they all have assistance programs. They know that people can't afford what you're just talking about. You know, you don't need to go broke because you're going through medication trauma. Right? Okay, right. Let's try it. Thanks, Nancy. I'll help. If you need help, I can help you with that, Mike. Okay. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. Yay, Nancy. <laughs> go ahead, Rick. Oh, just you just so Rick. Uh, just while I've got you, are, do you have something you want to present as well uh, uh, today? I can uh, give a little. You know, I'm approaching a decision. I can cover that. Okay, uh, let's let's do Kevin next, and then uh, and just just so I'll just cue you to be ready to go uh, after we do Kevin. Kevin, why don't you present your situation and and your background? All right. Again, most people on the screen know me, but Kevin Fordney and was uh, I'm just heading finning, heading into year three of uh, stage four prostate cancer of my 31 cores, 30 were 10 and one was nine. So, but all my mets are in my bones. Uh, only reason I say any of that, it probably relates to some degree to the treatments I've had and to part of the story, but, um, my story is a bit of a blend between Nancy and Rick. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a guy named Gary who is in, I've been in a men's group 615 every Friday morning at our uh, at our church, faith-based men's group. And Gary was an interesting guy, um, almost deaf late in life, and uh, and also had a huge anger around the American medical profession, unhealthy anger, frankly. I've appreciated this group where we know their limitations and can't expect them to do everything. So we need to do our part. But his combination of hearing issues, which made it hard for him to communicate. And one of his doctors said something inappropriate, but when it was said to Gary, he couldn't get it out of his and when he was complaining about the cost of a drug, the doctor said, I'm your oncologist, not your financial, not your financial planner. So all to say, where Gary comes into my life is about a year before Gary died, I got diagnosed with the exact, exact same cancer Gary had. And I'd listened to his stories and his problems. We were both with Kaiser at the time. If I'd known now what I, then what I knew now, I might've been able to help him. But he came to our group one time and said, I'm supposed to take this drug Zytiga, Abiraterone, $7,000 a month. And then he comes back later. Well, I can get it for 2000 something a month. And they're trying to explain all this donut full stuff to me. And I can't afford that and whatever. Well, due to his distrust, that big pharma was just out to make money. He found a study out of Chicago, which said that instead of taking four Zytika pills a day, if you took one a day in the morning with the right kind of breakfast, you got the same result, which might be true. But the point of this whole story is he could have lived about three years and he died after a year and a half because he spent months refusing treatment, arguing and uh, a good share of it was financially paid. So here I am, I get diagnosed, I go on docetaxel. I end up switching over to Dr. Vuki at the Knight Cancer Center because I wanted a broader choices of options in the future. And here I go, docetaxel wanes and I'm prescribed Zytiga and I think I'm sort of prepared from talking to Gary. But sure enough, I, I, and OHSU is a, they work with low income folks and whatever. They have a great advocacy program for trying to help people financially. But when I went to the OHSU pharmacy, I was quoted the $2,400 a month. And then they spent a lot of time talking about donut hole 
don't worry, it's not going to cost you 30,000 a year. It'll cost you six or eight or 10 by the time you're done. And I came within hours of, um, well, they also said they had me fill out this elaborate um, application to the drug company that they said would probably be approved, but it may take a couple months and you're going to have to pay the big ticket and then when that get approved it'll be okay and I came within about a week of starting the drug and came close to just telling them go ahead then I decided to call CVS pharmacy because they were the pharmacy connected with my insurance exact same thing went all the way to the top same 2500 a month same donut hole thing and in God's grace I got a card in the mail that I had thrown away for all the years. It was a good RX card. <laughs> so, um, Brad, I'm going to try to, I just did screen sharing again. And I don't know if it's going to. Yeah, Kevin, when I did screen sharing, I had to hit another share screen on, on the next page. It came up. Yeah, and I'm not hitting what I wanted to have come up. Um, let me try this again. Oh, dang it. I talked to my daughter, too, and she said that I had to select. It's working. You oh, did it. There it was. Praise for Meredith. Um, so... This is the most current. It was slightly different wow. when I did this a year and a half ago. But good RX is it's and I know well, I'm not going to waste your time. You guys probably know, but you put your drug in and it brings up all the pharmacies when you put your zip code in. And here we are with the American medical situation again. Fred Meyer, 2500. Costco 360, which is where I went, but yes. it was at the time. Rite Aid is now about the price that I paid. Look at Walmart. They're known for the cheapest of everything. So this, this is the insanity. And this is just one drug. I'm not trying to say every drug we would take um, would fall into this, but this was affordable. So the other thing the OHSU people did, so I go ahead and choose Costco, paid 180 bucks the first month, but I got a call back from the patient advocate at, um, at OHSU, and they put me on the phone on that call with the assistance fund. Took me 10 minutes on the phone. I told them, hey, I'm not rich but i'm not totally poor and in my mind i wouldn't qualify any of anything if i was wasn't uh like however they de determine the poverty level um they said oh no that's not how this works so the assistance fund has two programs purple and teal and prostate cancer falls under teal coincidentally Today, I just received this morning my re-enrollment text message because uh, I got my Aberroad. By the time I did this, I paid $10 a month to Costco. So I was accepted by the assistance fund. All I had to do is show Costco one time the little patient letter or whatever that came with it. And I paid $10 a month. Um, now, if you look on, if you were to go on the Assistance Fund website now, easy to navigate. I've talked with them, but they don't have people that'll come talk to us. It's laid out on their website. Problem is, and they do a gazillion answers. So I'd encourage you, because we're all advocates for everybody we love, just look at it quickly. You won't, if you run across anybody with any cancer, I'm guaranteeing you your cancer's here. The problem is, a lot of the things are waitlisted and prostate cancer is now waitlisted. You can still apply. I don't know how long it takes to clear the waitlist. Plus, 
There are other outfits out there that I didn't put on the slide that I began to look into sort of what Nancy's talking about. There are angels out there, but it does take our work, I think, at times to find them. And I'm going to look at your list, Nancy. I am going to be able to re-enroll ethically because I talked to somebody there and said, hey, I'm not on Abiraterone anymore. I don't know if I'm going to be on any drugs in 2023 that fit your program. They told me to re-enroll re under Abiraterone and just not use it. And if I have a drug I need in 2023, that they might be able to substitute that drug. So anyway, that's the bit that I have to share. Um, but the main takeaway is that I am grateful because even though my care has cost $200,000 a year, <laughs> I, my cost has been under 10,000. You know, I pay about four grand for every infusion and I, you know, I have all these scans and stuff. So that I can sort of budget and it's painful, but doable. But on top of that, if somebody's suggesting a drug that you get excited, it might be good for you. And it's another huge amount of dollars on top. That's very discouraging. Um, and for a lot of people, they don't have the resources that, and maybe their place in life is not as fortunate as we are, and they just buckle under and quit. Right. So I just want to be able to help people not quit. I'm with you. Thank, thank hey, you. Kevin, Kevin, can you this is one, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to, if you can just stay on this slide here for a second, because it's really fascinating. Um, this one here? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's really fascinating for me is, is what an anomaly this is in the world of e-commerce. I mean, there's, right. there's like, there's complete transparency. I mean, if you're going to go and you're going to buy, you know, whatever, a roll of toilet paper to, you know, a new piece of furniture online, you're going to be able to shop and you're going to be able to see, you know, what, what the, uh, the cost is, uh, you know, uh, by retailer. It's almost like the drug companies or who or this is good RX. I'm not sure how this is being driven. Um, don't recognize that we see this transparency. Why is it cost? Um, why is Rite Aid able to uh, sell it to us for 186? Yet uh, was it Walmart has the gall to to stick it to us for 5,800 dollars? I mean, that's just. And then if you look at like, what's this coupon? So if you look at Fred Meyer Pharmacy, coupon 4645, that same coupon is at Walgreens for 4645, yet their end uh, cost to the consumer is 3146 versus 2555. The math in this whole thing just doesn't make sense. Well, the only sense I can make, Brian, and I have not pushed, here's my supposition, because every one of these outfits uh, offer Medicaid, Medicare, but this isn't just for Medicare uh, people, but they all have their own relationships and get their drugs from somebody, even though it's the same, the same drug. Right. So I'm not sure that Walmart's making over $5,000 profit over what Costco is. If they are, we ought to hang them by their, you know what, <laughs> but, um, but I, I, I followed some of this drug stuff. I'll tell you, it's the only reason I cheered on Bernie Sanders or whatever, because it's insane, this whole thing. It's not going to get fixed quickly. But thankfully, there are some workarounds. Maybe not this elegant for every med that we're going to take, but it's motivated me to not take don't, wouldn't you usually take the answer of the pharmacy of a night cancer center at a hospital that works with the indigent? And the best they could do for me out of their pharmacy was $2,500 a month. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You want to go to a trusted source. But I mean, this just tells me this is so unregulated. It, it, it does need oversight. This is ridiculous. So there, I think there are two, two points I want to underline. And thank you, Kevin, for this story. It's awesome. The first is the power of shopping. And so part of the answer is that patients don't shop. 
like we do for everything else. That's another way of interpreting what you're saying. So part of it is on the patients who don't shop yeah. for healthcare, like they should, like they shop for everything else. And if they did, they uncover this as Kevin did, mm -hmm. and then they find out the huge disparity. And so the reason that it persists is because it's not that there isn't the ability to find this out. Obviously it is because Kevin did, but rather it, it helps somebody in the system um, to maintain their margins. So the uneducated, the people that aren't doing this research are paying outrageous amounts of money. The insurance is paying outrageous amounts of money. I will put a, a link in the show notes to those who are interested. There's an industry structure. There's something called a pharmacy benefit manager, a PBM, and they exist in between the pharma companies and the uh, employers, the insurance companies, the retailers in, in there. And they're the ones who are getting rebates from the uh, pharmaceutical companies. And so it's a, a, a middleman distribution problem where people are scratching each other's backs and it's in their advantage to not be transparent and not be open about this. So they're winning and that's why this persists. Nancy, did you have any other comments for Kevin's story? I'm just screaming that he has to go through all this and that we just can't give up because, you know, we have to be more active about asking for regulations. I mean, the contrast between 130, 186 at Rite Aid and whatever the highest number was, it's the same drug, right? Nobody, it's not a generic, it's not. It is a generic. That's the generic cost? Oh, wow. Yeah, Zytiga is the branded product, right, Rick? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I get uh, the generic at Rite Aid. So I went through the same thing uh, that Kevin just described. And mm -hmm. kudos to you, Kevin. And uh, I didn't go that far. I just said, you know, okay, what's my copay? I've got great insurance. I've got Medicare. Mm -hmm. And I have a health net supplement that's supposed to cover everything uh, that Medicare doesn't. And it was like 500 bucks. And I was like going, what? And um, I think the person on the phone uh, um, at the pharmacy said, well, why don't you use the good RX? Oh, I go, oh, okay. I've used good RX once before. And uh, then I saw the same uh, website that you were presenting. And I'm like going, whoa. Well, uh, I've always joked wrong aid. But uh, <laughs> now I, I'm not joking wrong it anymore. I'm very appreciative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because my, my copay, my first copay was 500 and then it will reduce to like 390. I'm like, oh, forget about it. You know, so I go to the pharmacy. I just went for abiraterone or for, yeah, for abiraterone and, you know, just paid my 187. Well, go Finish. on the wait. Go on the wait list for um, the assistance fund. You have to. I think the window to sign up is close to closing. But if the wait list opens up while you're still on the drug, I say I got it for ten bucks a month. Okay, can you share uh, the wait? How to find this wait list? All you do is on this. Just Google the assistance fund, the website will come up, you'll see the 2023 enrollment, and then it tells, takes you to, tells you to go to the enrollment page. We're under purple, so you'll find prostate cancer under purple, and you do, it's all online. If there's any issue, this is not somebody that makes you chat, their phone number will take you to a live body. Great, thank you. Rick, did you want to add anything else about your any other stories from your experience? Sure, I, I can be quick. And um, I'm on Abiraterone now, and I'm about to leave for San Diego to get a Pluvicto in, infusion. I'm happy uh, that I believe I was deemed castrate resistant, and yet Abiraterone prior to getting on Pluvicto, uh, lowered my PSA from 13 to 12. After a doubling time of a month, 
I was so ecstatic that I seemed to respond to abiraterone. So it seems that I'm not completely castrate resistant as I've been on docetaxel for seven or eight months. So I stopped pushing on that androgen receptor pathway. So that's great. Uh, I am working with Dr. or I've employed Dr. Uh, Don Lamont, who's working with Dr. Gattenby. Uh, and the idea is to pulse abiraterone. And so the uh, question I have is, okay. Oh, so um, my PSA on the combination of uh, Pluvicto and abiraterone went from 12 to 4. So, pfft, yay. And I don't feel pain in my chest uh, or discomfort. It wasn't pain, but I could feel, you know, I think it's like a, coming up on three quarters of an inch or an inch in my chest um, diameter. And I don't feel that anymore. So that's that's wonderful. So now the question is, do I buy into Bob Gattenby's approach and start pulsing so I don't drive a sensitive population of my tumor into extin extinction? So I am not able to get a clear guidance from Raina McKay or her physician's assistant, Archana. Talked to her yesterday and she said, well, why would you stop what's working? And I described the uh, resistance strategy. And she goes, wow, well, they just don't know. And I said, you know, I'm looking at my PSA weekly because Dr. Lamont asked for it weekly to model my resistance. And she goes, wow, I don't even know anything about that. Because I said, well, how does Pluvicto work? Does it, you know, make your PSA drop? and tail off or is it a, you know what kind of curve are we talking about and she doesn't know they didn't measure it in the vision trial they just don't know um so uh i definitely want to stay sensitive so i'm planning on stopping abiraterone on my own and, oh and dr lamon is um wonderful but hard to get a hold of and doesn't seem to have all the answers either and the best guidance i get from her it would not be unreasonable to stop abiraterone as long as you don't have any organ involvement or pain rick oh. let me interrupt there um just this topic is on the financial aspects and so yep. let me let me pull out uh just a, a different aspect which i know you've been in the middle of and that is, you're being seen at City of Hope, you're being seen with Raina McKay at UCSD, you're being seen at UCLA, now you've got Don Lamont in the mix. And so on the cost of providers side, and, and tell us, you know, what Don is charging you, and like, how are you managing that aspect of the finances? Because you, you're racking up some bills on the provider side, I imagine. Yeah, it's not too bad for me i think we're all in the kind of the same boat we're not rich but uh we do have you know a few grand here and there to stay alive i guess my life is worth a few grand uh i have paid so far uh dr lamont charges uh hundred dollars let's see uh no ten dollars a minute to talk to me or to review my data or so far I paid $1,050 to get signed into her deal, filled out all her forms. So that was $1,050. I figured, and no zero uh, insurance. She doesn't deal with insurance. You know, you want to pay it or you don't. Um, so I did. I felt it was a very good experiment. I'm uh, paying the same 187 at Rite Aid uh, that Kevin just described. And I'm hoping under her guidance, you know, maybe, uh, and under Kevin's now to get to $10, but I'm hoping to basically cut that in half to $5 because I'm planning on pulsing Aberaterone. Got it. So that's my cost. 
What about the testing? You said she's actually uh, she's encouraged you to get a battery of tests and a weekly yeah. PSA. So how how much is that is impacting you? So far zero, which is astonishing. Uh, other than for the, the blood test, she ordered about 20 blood tests that were not ordered by uh, any of my other uh, standard of care oncologists. Zero cost. I still don't understand all of the reasons why she ordered these 20 blood tests or what they are. I need to do that homework, uh, but it was zero cost. I did a... Um, DEXA scan, which determined my uh, body fat and bone composition, and that was $70 out of my pocket. So that's all it's been. So are these tests she just hasn't billed you yet, or it's lumped in They're, with the $10 a minute? <laughs> no, uh, those tests um, were covered. Um, so the to get the tests done were covered by uh, Medicare. Oh, okay. Cover my insurance. Okay, great. And, um, but she will charge me probably uh, two, three, five hundred dollars to sit down and talk about them upcoming. If I can get a slice of her time. Great. Nancy, do you have any comments on Rick's story? No, I, I'm really touched by what some of these people are going through. And I wondered, is there anybody in any of your lives who could take over some of the research for you so that you could, I don't know, read a book, go for a walk? Oh, I, I vote for Stephanie. <laughs> I got her locked up. <laughs> I totally vote for Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> She seems like a terrific. I mean, I think you probably have people that are saying, "How can I be helpful?" I hope you have people who say, "How can I be helpful?" I mean, could you give some of this stuff, the dirty work, away to someone so you could get a massage? Boy, that's <laughs> great. Who is going to read the vision oh, trial no. <laughs> paper and interpret? I mean, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm reading the, you know, science publications. Anyway, I can help for what I do. I'm happy to share. Well, I, but I, th I think that that's a great point, Nancy, is that, you know, um, uh, it's really helpful to have a partner. Noelle is on the phone here, is on the, our call um, instead for her husband, uh, Phil, um, who just joined the Prostate Cancer Lab. She's, you know, I spoke to her Monday. She's an amazing amazing advocate for her husband. Um, but, you know, I think it is helpful to, to have those types of um, family and friend resources that can help to um, reduce some of these burdens because, uh, you know, um, it, it is a lot for patients to just have to go through figuring out the treatments, withstanding the treatments, all stuff you know, and, and um, it, it is really, it's helpful. Um, Rick, I, I did actually have a question and maybe Nancy. No, I just interrupt, uh, Kevin, if you could click on the, the Zoom icon, the blue one in the lower right, and then I think you can stop the share screen. Oh, I tried to stop the share. Yeah, click the blue, the Zoom one in the bottom right there. Well, I don't have anything on the bottom anymore. Oh, <laughs> I'm seeing it. Yeah, we, we see it. We see, we, see, we, see your, we see your screen. It's next to your trash oh, oh, can. down here? Yeah. 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 Click that one. Does that bring it up? And so you can then click. Uh, oh, now what do I click? Uh, there's the share screen. I think it usually shows up at the top. Right. And then just uh, unshare. Click it again, I think, usually. Okay. And that should unshare it. Okay, now we... it says new share. It keeps saying new share when I click it. Hmm. Um, hmm. Wait a you second. can just drag it to the left so it minimizes it, the splitter bar. Well, like. No, I mean to all of us. I know, but I'm not. I'm horrible at this. So my screen now. Oh, wait, stop share. There we go. Yes. Thank you. All right. That's the all right. Thank you for. <laughs> I'm, uh, if I have to do something again, I'll be slightly more agile. And I stress the word slightly. You'll 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 be a zoom a zoom jockey. Look so at all Brian, these things you learn at the prostate cancer lab. That's right. 
That's right. Um, Brian, I think I interrupted you. You were going to make a comment. Yeah, it was just a, you know, first off, I wanted to provide a shout out to Noel and, and all the amazing um, support that, that all of these guys are getting from their family members, because um, I know it's there. Um, but the other thing relative to Rick's story is that, you know, he is looking at pulsing a drug, Abiraterone. And, you know, I wonder how drug companies feel about that, um, because that may be a um uh, you know it would it's it's not an maybe an approved way to actually use the drug and so if you were to use the drug in an unapproved way um does that actually affect the pricing nancy i don't know if you've ever run across that type of situation but um and i'm not saying i'm not i don't know if unapproved is the right word right but typically abiraterone is a daily drug that you take you know Every day. Every day. Um, and Rick is now looking at pulsing it where he would, you know, do it, you know, until his PSA rises or, you know, his PSA drops and then he, and then he lets go. He stops Abirata around for a month, two months, watches his PSA. And then, so anyway, if it's unconventional, right. Um, but it's coming under the uh, recommendation of one of the doctors that that advises the prostate cancer lab uh, regarding adaptive therapy. So I'm just curious, um, given that situation, and there may be others like that, um, does that present risks for Rick in terms of his costs? Who's the only one who's going to answer that? It seems to me is the pharmacology company you know is this is this legitimate way are you taking a you nobody can take risks anymore you know we're just yeah. too far beyond that risk taking but i still want to say i'd hit up these companies I, they mm -hmm. have assistance programs and they have to be knowledgeable about the things that maybe our physicians and all the wonderful clinicians that we are hiring to take care of us don't have information about i mean that's what i'm hearing through some of these conversations like who's a, who's who know, who really knows if that's a safe process for him he's working so hard you know we don't want him because of money to not take the drug well i don't think there's financial risk because all rick has to do is stock up and then he can use it any way he wants i i had to go off abiraterone right so I have a month and a half supply of Abiraterone sitting in my, you know, and nobody's, because I, you know, you know, nobody takes it forever. So the pulsing, I think, or if you did the one pill a day that my friend did, who seemed to think there was good research to support it, I don't think you're at any kind of financial risk. You might, they would say you're at a risk for effectiveness of the drug, yeah. but not financial so i can hop in uh once it goes off patent there's no risk the biopharma is out of the picture once it goes off patent they're not right. selling the drug nothing about it i was on dartalutamide which is by bayer for about five months and i didn't really respond that was thirty five thousand a month and i had uh pretty well and uh my cost with the Bayer assistance was zero. So I did get in on that. I don't know what you guys have experienced with darlutamide, but uh, I was appreciative to Bayer. And I know how much being working at Amgen, how much it costs to develop a drug. And I was grateful uh, for that assistance. Yeah. But there's two, if it's off patent, you know, drug companies yeah. have nothing to do with it anymore. They don't. Yeah. yeah it's made yeah. somewhere yeah that's a good example rick with bear you know providing financial assistance i had the same story i was on keytruda permalizumab they had a you know lily has a financial assistance program i didn't have to pay anything for you know at least a year um we've got about five minutes left i want to give a chance to eric jim or chad to ask any questions or noel to ask any questions they may have because since you haven't had a chance to weigh in here anybody want to jump in with anything yeah, this is Jim. I assume we're not talking about Mark Cuban's cost plus program because he because it doesn't cover prostate cancer medications. 
Yeah, I, I know a little bit about that. I've heard of it, and I know that they're 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 taking drugs and offering them at much 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 reasonable more reasonable prices because of this infrastructure around the pharmacy benefit managers. What and, and um, I don't I think they're expanding out their drug profile, but I wouldn't know if they are covering prostate cancer drugs. Yeah, I haven't checked into it. I've just, I've heard of it, uh, heard an interview on NPR with Mark Cuban, and you're right, they are expanding, uh, I think, pretty rapidly um, mm -hmm. the number of drugs that are available through the program, but just thought I'd throw it out there in case anybody has looked into it. Okay. I do have one thing. I, I believe uh, Pluvicto is covered for um, a finite duration, like 100%. Uh, we, I just looked yeah. at the bill. It was like $240,000 for my first infusion <laughs> and it was covered a hundred percent to my awareness. Um, but once let's say, uh, it looks like it's still working and I run, I'm good till June under Medicare. I'm told after June, <laughs> I, you know, like, uh, uh, Nancy said, I'm not going to, I don't have $240,000 every six weeks. Uh, uh, I just wouldn't, this is not an option anymore. So I'll, does anyone have any insight there? Yeah, Pulvicto is currently only FDA approved six, six infusions, period, the end. Uh, they're really looking at possibly uh, making it available for, let's just say, second uh a second time, but as we know, things are going to move very, very slowly. So we're probably several years out from that. Uh, the only other options I've seen for things like Levicto, as well as a sister drug that has some stronger side effects, is actinium. And uh, I was on a seminar the other night where uh, you can actually fly to Turkey, spend some time in Turkey, have a great vacation, and it actually ends up costing you, you maybe out of pocket, you'd be in, out ten or twelve thousand dollars. So that's really the only option to to get it a second time that I'm aware of. Wow, you might want to talk to to Bryce Olson about uh, actinium, Mike. Just as a yeah. side note. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not I'm not pressing for actinium because of some side effects. Okay, okay, Hi, it's just yeah, another drug that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anything from you, Chad? Uh, Noel, any questions? Um, we've been really blessed. My husband is, he's still working full time. He's been um, battling stage four prostate cancer going up. It's going to be five years coming up in March. Um, his company's been really tremendous and uh, we've been blessed. We haven't had really any financial hardship so far anyway. So, but hearing all these stories, I mean, yeah, that's heartbreaking. I agree with Nancy. That's why I'm here. You know, um, Phil will join periodically, but it, it's so stressful for everyone going through this. I've just tried to take some of that burden off because I know the damage. I was in corrections for 18 years. Talk about a stressful environment, um, working in a, a jail. Um, so I know the damage that that stress does and, and none of you guys need that. I mean, so yeah, I agree. If somebody can help lighten the load in any way, at least that's what I'm here to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think sharing these stories, and I, and I think I, I just am so grateful that there is this community here that's sharing these stories and sharing possible interventions to make things a little bit easier for everybody, because we all know, it, it, just as, as you said, that just the stress is, is insurmountable sometimes, and people quit, and you can't quit. It's just not an option. We got to go. We got to make this work. I'm here to help. I mean, I have a website with a whole bunch of resources that are not just about medications, but they're about other pieces of our lifestyle that, that are financial issues. So go to that, check it out. Um, what is it? What is it? Nancyslist.org, N-A-N-C-Y-S-L-I-S-T.org. I'll send you a follow-up. But um, there are other places maybe we can get some, you know, life uh quality of life ups you know vacations retreats all kinds of stuff for free 
that can just yeah <laughs> look at his face yeah <laughs> i appreciate it. yeah i mean there are a lot of ways that we can boost our level of of life so um check it out there's a lot on there at nancyslist.org call me i'm available i'm with you guys all the way well thank you nancy for making some time appreciate it we'll we'll dig into you know